Good morning, everyone. Today we read the Book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-three. This chapter follows chapter fifty-two. Yesterday, when we read chapter fifty-two, when people sinned, God actually paid the price. And in this chapter today, we'll see the price that God has paid, and this price has turned into a great miracle. But the miracle is not what we. Thought before expected, and this is actually the greatest miracle ever happened since the creation of the world. But it's not like the shaking of heaven and、uh, the moving of mountains and sea,、uh, which everyone would respond with like "Wow, holy!"、Uh, with a great fear of God. That may be the expect expectation of man, but this miracle. Happened silently, but it is the greatest miracle because it has brought the greatest effect. And、uh, when we have become a believer for a long time, sometimes we may forget or don't feel as strongly. But we need to recall, so our faith can be strengthened. Otherwise, our faith will decrease. And that's why this chapter is very precious. It actually refreshes our faith and helps us return to our first love. So, first one, two, three, first section, first four to nine, and the first ten to twelve. The first section: Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He's despised and rejected by men. And a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. So we see that、uh, the servant of God came to the stage of history, and、uh, the prophet asked a question: Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? So who was this? Was this man that we have preached about or reported about? Like this prophet has experienced and witnessed this, but who can believe believe this report? Even the Israelites didn't believe that today the chosen people of God, the Israelites, the Jews, they don't believe that. He is the servant of God. They didn't believe in this miracle, and they still don't believe this. That this is our God, Savior, because people worship idols, and、uh, people always have this perception. They mention who. This Messiah would be, and now you can close your eyes and imagine Jesus. Does he have blue eyes and the golden hairs and the, the some、um, light shining forth from him, and everyone would adore? Or is he someone who is marred, is bleeding? You may think that、uh, Jesus' hand is very soft. And lovely, but actually, he has he had the carpenter's hand. So, who, how is Jesus like in your mind? And the prophet asks, "Who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed?" That means who knows?、Uh, who has received the revelation of God? Only those who understand will know that this is really the greatest miracle. Jesus said there is no other miracle apart from Jonah, be、uh, like the miracle of Jonah. And to those who didn't have faith, no sign would be given to them anymore. Today we also have a lot of perceptions. It's not easy to break out 
set mindset. Next time, I should show you some photos. A、uh, handsome Jesus,、um, a historical painting, and、uh, we may actually have certain preconceptions or our own ideas about Jesus or God's image. The Israelites thought the Messiah would solve all the problems and made Israel. The strongest nation in the whole world. They didn't understand we are the nation of God. Why couldn't we defeat Assyria or Babylon? And Persia would be coming. We are only a small nation in the land of Canaan, but the others has such a great empire. We may think that yeah, Israelites, you, oh Israel, you have God, but we also actually are like that. We also ask, how come the idol worshippers are so rich and wealthy? How come their company is so su- successful? How come a company is so small? How come those who do not believe in Jesus, how come they are so prosperous? Do we expect also that、uh, everything will be smooth in our life as we believe in God? These are also our preconceptions or, or our own ideas of who God should be like. So the prophet asked, "Who has believed our report? Who can really see and understand who the servant of God is?" And so the prophet revealed to us. Who this servant of God really is? Verse two: For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. Actually, it's not easy to have a plant in the wilderness, in the desert, in the dry ground. So, the Messiah was born in somewhere that we would not expect him to be, and now we know. Jesus was born in the manger. He should be born in the hospital, in a comfortable place. Why would he be born in the manger? And、uh, where he was born was not common, ordinary. It was kind of strange. Why would the creator of the whole universe not born in a palace? But in a manger, just like today, this the wealthiest man would not appear in a street restaurant. Should be in a five-star hotel or villa, and that is our expectation. So Jesus also was not expected, or the Messiah was not expected to be born in a manger. And the Bible actually tells us that Jesus did not have a handsome face. Oh, he didn't look attractive. He just was ordinary, and、uh, he was even despised and rejected by man. There was no beauty that we should desire him. He was a man of sorrow. And acquainted with grief, that's very hard for us to imagine. Like if,、uh, with Jesus, the Messiah had a sorrowful life. How could he save others? This is another preconceived idea we have. Just like、uh, when, if we are poor, we don't expect that.、Uh, um, I can help you if we're both poor. And so it said that we all did not esteem him. He was despised. He was born in in a very low place. He didn't have any beauty that we should desire. He was sorrowful all the time. So this first section tells us that God is not what we expect. What He did was beyond our reasoning or imagination.
or rationality. We always sing a song, "Amazing Grace." This song is really amazing, and、uh, we should say instead, "It's a crazy love." No one can understand or imagine a fathom. Just like today, are you willing to go bankrupt to save me? And this price is that God has paid is even way higher than we can ever imagine. Next section, verse four to nine. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray; we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who would? Declare his generation, for he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. So, in this section, we see the the relationship between the Savior and and us. What's the interaction between man and the savior? This interaction is very important. Without this interaction, we cannot see the strong arm of God. Without this interaction, we cannot understand what the prophet preached today in the spirit. We also need to interact with Jesus. And first, four to nine. What caught me today is we and he and we and he and we. So surely he has borne our griefs. He has borne our griefs. The griefs belong to us, but He bore it, and the the burdens of sin He has carried for us instead. So that's the difference. If you're still carrying a burden, if you do not see this, we will complain and ask God, "Why is it so hard for me?" But if you really understand, actually. Jesus has borne our griefs already. If you see it in the spirit, then you see that all the pressure and burden on your shoulder has been released, and Jesus has come to help us carry our sorrows. And we are not here to, um, yeah, He has not been sleeping, but He has borne our sorrows. He has carried our sorrows. He has been with us, but we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. We do not give thanks to him for carrying our sorrows, but we laugh at him and think that okay,、um, you deserve this. The people who watch Jesus. Be nailed on the cross. Said, "If you are God, then save yourself. Jump down from the cross." We are also like that, but he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And he was sinless, but because of us, he was bruised for our iniquities; he was wounded for our transgressions. Because of his punishment. We receive peace. So this salvation, this cross, is very special. We have an exchange between us and Jesus. What did we ex- give for the exchange? Our sins. God,、uh, Jesus took all of our sins, and He took our punishment and bruises, and He. Gave us his peace. He gave us salvation and eternal life. We don't deserve it. We we give our worst to him. But Jesus said, "I'll give you my life, my peace, and eternity. I will take 
your stripes, which you deserve, so they can be healed. And I take the punishment for you, so you can have peace. Can you see that? We give the words to Jesus, and Jesus takes them all the worst of things and gives us the best instead. Can you imagine this picture? We come before Jesus, and you give in Jesus a apple filled with worms. And you come before Jesus, and Jesus takes it away, and then He gives you another new apple, a very sweet and clean apple without any worms. And He will do this exchange unconditionally without any price. And、uh, so. God took all the iniquity of man and put that on Jesus, and that salvation, that's the Messiah. And the reason that people do not accept is that they cannot think that this is a savior. Like all the idols are dressed up nicely, and. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He is the most humble one. He was a carpenter. He suffered, but he did not make any noise, just like a sheep. And he was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He did not resist that. Was it because he didn't have the power or strength? No. Why didn't he re- in,、uh, reviews or try to? Resist the oppression because he did it willingly. He wanted to take away all our sins and sorrows. He wanted to save us. Today we are new persons, new creation, because Jesus has taken all our shame and accusations away. The enemy cannot humiliate us anymore because Jesus has taken all of that. Away, so we should live a new life. And he did not resist or make any noise. Through the cross, we can have an exchange with Jesus. We have to understand this exchange has already been accomplished or completed. If we do not believe that this exchange has been completed already, then we are like a You know, some pigs in a farm. After giving them a shower, and they will go back to the mud, and they become dirty again. If we do not know, if we do not see that Jesus has exchanged with us our worst for the best, and that we are like going back to the mud, we should just stay clean, like a. Oh, clean pig! Instead of going back to the mud, if we do not know or believe that this exchange has been accomplished, then we always return to our old life. We should know that I'm not the old man anymore. I'm not the dirty pig. I'm the precious pig of God. If when the enemy accuses you, you can say that、um, uh, I'm no longer in the mud in the dirt. Go to Jesus because I've given him all my faults and sins and shame, and、uh, the enemy cannot find us. Satan cannot come and find us, and、uh, the rope that's bound us already in Jesus' hand, so we can live a free life now. The enemy, Satan, cannot come find us, and. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who would declare his generation? 
So, who can describe or explain what this generation is? This is a twisted generation, a fallen generation, full of oppression and sin. Everyone has sinned, but this is a generation who has received salvation and freedom and healing and salvation. You see, there's two extreme: from darkness into light, from hopelessness into hope. So, have we we experienced this extreme change? Have we tasted the freedom from bondages? Our lives are no longer the same. All the sins and bondages have been taken away by Jesus, and this is the true salvation. So, who can understand and declare His generation? He has exchanged. This generation with his life, so this generation can have freedom and salvation is no longer oppressed. And for he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of his people. He was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth. Jesus has not taken anything from anyone; he has not spoken a word of deceit. So even when Pilate wanted to judge Jesus, he couldn't find any fault with him. The law could not condemn it, but the man still condemned him to death. Our religion and human mind could not accept him. And he was buried with the wealthy ones, and God has turned all this upside down. And verse ten to twelve, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Why would this savior suffer, and was? He did not perform a lot of miracles gloriously, so that、uh, the nations would bow down to him because God treated him as a atoning sacrifice. He is eternal atoning sacrifice, so he is like the Passover lamb, even though he is innocent. And the Israelites also understand that. The lamb of sacrifice has not done anything wrong. The lamb could only make this sound me, me. So the lamb is innocent, and Jesus is just like that innocent Passover lamb, and he took up the sin of all men. He bear all the iniquities, and when Jesus. After becoming an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. That means Jesus did that willingly. He was satisfied when he saw that everything would be renewed. So let's not disappoint Jesus today in our life. Let's live out a renewed life. And、uh, if you were, had low self-esteem, do not have low self-esteem anymore. If you used to accuse yourself, don't condemn yourself anymore. Let's just exchange ourselves. Don't live in the old accusation or bitterness or pain, but live in peace and and、uh, joy. So Jesus actually gave a willing. Offering.
and he was satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous servant shall justify many, and he shall bear all our iniquities. Because Jesus has given all this, so God will restore His glory and authority. He has paid the the price of His life, so God will turn this upside down, and He was numbered with the transgressors. He bore the sin of many willingly. He made the intercession for the transgressors. But as we return to Jesus, Jesus. Will be satisfied. So let let us keep this picture always in our hearts. When we are bitter or have self pity, when we accuse ourselves, when we complain, everything, let's remember this picture again and remind ourselves. Let's not complain again. We need to give thanks to God. We need to have a new life so that Jesus can be satisfied. Amen. Jesus, you are my savior. You are my only hope in eternity. Let's worship this true God, our savior. Thank you, Lord. He loves us so much. By His stripes we are healed. He's taken our sorrows and bare our iniquities, and He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes we are healed. So let's give thanks to him. What kind of sufferings have we experienced? What sins have we committed that Jesus has taken up for us? So let's give thanks to him. Let's give thanks to him. One by one, Lord, we forgive. Confess that we have committed a lot of sins, but thank you that you have taken up all my sins, carried all my sorrows. And in these days of pandemic, I can still have peace, even though I had、uh, this illness. But then I got healed. So I give you great thanks. Thank you. Today also, let's take a moment to reflect. Maybe we have some problems. We have not experienced a、uh, deliverance yet. Maybe because we have also some preconception of God, what God should do. Just as、like、the Israelites, they did not expect that the Messiah would be born in a manger. Can you also accept that they couldn't accept? That、uh, the Messiah had no beauty, and they couldn't accept that the salvation would be accomplished through the cross by a tomb, the sacrifice offering. So they couldn't enter the salvation. What about us today, as Gentiles? We are blessed because it's easier for us to accept that Jesus has nailed on the cross, but. Do we also struggle and wonder in our difficult times why has not God helped us? Like God, why don't you change my husband or children or my colleague or boss? We want some beauty. We want something good. Or do we see that? Oh, that's my stubborn mindset. Let's、uh, listen to God now, and let's ask God: Has my mindset prevent you from working? So let's ask the Lord to open our spiritual eyes to see and to break all these preconceived、uh, mindset, our own ideas of what God should do or what God is like. As I quiet down and pray, I see a picture. Someone is sitting in a room, and it's quite dark. The lights are not on, and this man is looking at the door and talking to God. Open this door, help me! I don't want to stay in this room. I want to go out. But then, the picture 
and it's just the angle shifts up, and there's actually no ceiling, and Jesus is actually looking down onto the child, and Jesus says to the child, "Look up to me, look up to me," and he extends his hand onto、uh, to this. Child, but the child cannot see her, and it keeps on asking Jesus, "Open the door! Open the door! I want to go out." And then, but then this child or this man just climbs down from Jesus' hand, and then Jesus said, "I have many ways to save you. Believe in me. Trust in me. And hold on to me." Look at me and come to my salvation. Do not return to your own ways, and don't go back to your the mud, the dirty mud. Trust me. Come up. The way I save you is different. If this is your situation now, so let's pray. Put your hand on your heart and ask the Holy Spirit to open your spiritual eyes in the spirit. And confess that oh, I have been stubborn. I just want to get out from the door. I have not seen that you are actually here trying to help me. Let's pray for ourselves now. Lord, help us. Give us a soft heart to see that Jesus wants to save us. He's determined to save us. Help us to see the salvation and not continue to stay in this. Trapped condition. Lord, hold my hands. Help me. Open our eyes to see this, Lord. Like this picture. Lord, I want to show everyone, the whole world, that you have saved us. You have helped me. So help me to see your salvation. We give you thanks. And now, brothers and sisters, let's pray for our church. Salvation of God is for everyone. Today we can receive this blessing, and we want everyone to also receive it. So, God is stirring us to build a temple, so everyone can see this salvation. So let's pray for the temple building, for our church. Building a temple is like building an altar. We want to bring the presence of God. So let's pray that the temple building process will be smooth, that the whole world can see your work, and that everyone can know that Jesus has accomplished salvation for us already. Lord, hear our prayer. We give you Project Hebron. When it's difficult, please help us. That we can continue with the temple building, so we can can be satisfied. That you'll be pleased with us. Oh, use us, Lord. Help us to build this temple smoothly. Let the brothers and sisters be united to do this. Lord, we know that as we do this, you'll be pleased with us. You'll be with us in the difficult time. Hong Kong really needs you. So hear our prayer. Help us and bless our. Temple building project. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Isaiah chapter fifty-three, verse eleven. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. The labor of his soul is to see the changes in our lives and the renewal of all nations. So let's pray, so that every day our hearts will be renewed and changed, so that when Jesus looks at us, he will be satisfied. Holy Spirit, please come into our hearts. Give us a renewed life, so that every day will change, and every day will be renewed and become more like Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name, I cut all the condemnations and accusations and bondages of sin, and all the burdens. In Jesus' name, I take the sword of the Holy Spirit to break them. I command all the bitterness and sorrows and Sins to go away, and give us this renewal, and accomplish your salvation in our lives, so we can make exchange for you, your power, your glory, 
your thanksgiving, your joy, peace will fill us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.